time for another Beagle and Life song. Speedway has two distinctive parts, with folk part, which is filled with country vocals and blues guitar, built on a song that sounds like it's a traditional English ballad. And the second part, which is a crystal clear, in-your-face rock with solos, overdrive, loud drums and all. And all over that, it has this awesome electronic music beat by Guy Fletcher. So it's a very eclectic mix if you think about it. Makes it one of the greatest songs in Mark's whole catalog. Parts are so distinctive that in the Sailing to Philadelphia tour, Mark even played the first part on acoustic guitar to emphasize the folk roots probably, and only then would switch to a Les Paul. This song reminds me of On Every Street a lot. It has also has a quiet and simple first part, an epic ballad with a piano and almost classical music feel that goes to the loud guitar driven part with the specific riff and it even uses a lot of common chords and even shares the key signature of the speedway But most importantly, this is another example of the riff where the melody dictates everything. As I discussed in my On Every Street video, there are a lot of ways to play this riff. As long as the melody stays the same, you are good to go. The same is true for Speedway. This basic melody basically stays the same all the time, but the chords, the chords can and should change. Surely more than in On Every Street. Speedway Reef is definitely harder to play, and I'll discuss why. It starts on A power chord. In the folk part, the full A major would pass. But in the rock part, this mm, C sharp is a bit unnecessary. So it sounds better without the third. So it's either like this, just three strings, or with an E on top. But then on D, there are at least three ways to play it. Maybe this. D with A in the bass or D with power chord or this more folky D with an F sharp in the bass to C which is pretty much always C can change that really except to play that as a power chord as well. And at last, the first chord without variations will be G. Here I really don't know other ways to do it. So A5, D, C, G. Now, the long part staying on this F6 Chord from another song, this time Rudiger. Remember Rudiger? So 
So it's D5 or no third or D power chord, whichever you prefer. F in the bass and the melody. Going to E sus4 melody. And again, here are a couple of ways to approach it with an open D. To F with a melody on the third fret, which also can be thought as D minor and C or C major 7 or C major 7 with G in the bass or C major 7 in another fingering See some places have three or four ways of playing it and it's a bit of a mess in the intro I try to compile it in to the version that I like the most, but for now continue this F the melody to G, again the only place that doesn't change. Here I like to play C with E in the bass and F. Sounds great. part repeats for the last time, melody, C major 7, F, melody, sus4. If you can follow that, a great idea is to write it down in chords. A big song like that might be too big to comprehend, so always try to find a way to learn it easier. As for the rhythm, personally, I think in two, four here, so I never count like one, two, three, four. Here I care only about two beats and that's all. Most of the chords in this riff consist of two beats anyway. It's 30 bars or 60 beats in total and I'll play it right now. A5, D, C, G, Melody Sus4 E7 Melody F Melody C major 7 F Melody G C with E in the bass F Melody C major 7, F, melody, sus4, and repeat. Fortunately, there are no shortcuts, and playing a riff like that only goes with a lot of experience, simply because it has so many variations, and the song is fast, and you need to make all these decisions fast, and for a seasoned player it's not a big deal, but I can understand how it can feel impossible for beginners. Here I'd say no shortcuts, just play more and you'll eventually get, get there. In a separate video I already discussed the solo part in this song, so I only need to cover the folk part to be done with this song for now. The folk part is the complete opposite of the riff part. It's mostly a simple four chord folk song, starting again with A, no third, to G, to G and E minor. Mm -hmm. 
next part is D. A. G. E minor. A5. The only hard beat here is this half of the riff that I already discussed in full. A5, D, C, G, F. For the strumming, this is yet another thing that makes the song extra hard, since it can be both strummed and finger picked. And this strumming, it's a classical folky bass downstroke, bass up, down, up. So this song has a lot of going, as you can see, and I'm not someone who can magically enable someone to play it. Again, get to work and you'll play it. Another thing I wanted to discuss is the arrangement. If you never heard the live version, have a listen first and then return here. Because this song might have the best life ending in any of Mark's songs. The drummer is king in this song and I wanted to say it for a long time and I know at least a few thousand of people will watch this video and many will agree that Danny played it better. Danny Cummings is a drummer and a percussionist who still plays with Mark and the way he serves the songs is just on another level. I think in the recent recording, as I can even read in his facial expression during Speedway that he played better and he would. Anyway, thanks Danny. Thanks Mark and thank you for watching.